Hey everybody, Jordan here with CoverCult ETF Investing and in today's video, I think you all are going to hopefully appreciate this ETF screener comparison tool that I'm about to uh, show as an example of how to evaluate different ETFs and specifically in this scenario, uh, cover call ETFs. So throughout the different kinds of testing that I've done uh, of different free tools out there, the one, this one by Vanguard, uh, I actually really like. It has a lot of information here that I think will be really valuable. So let's get started. Um, we're gonna be comparing up to four funds. Uh, you can't do more than that. You can certainly do less, but up to four. Now these four ETFs in particular are the four big all-in-one cover call funds, meaning that these are ETFs that invest in other ETFs, specifically cover call ETFs. So um, if you like what you see here, as always, subscribe and uh, the description for this comparison tool will be in the description below. We're actually going to start at the bottom just so that this heading of each cover call fund, we can see that because if I scroll down, it'll disappear. And besides, the bottom of this of this page is where all the boring info is anyway. So as we scale up, uh, that's where more of the interesting info is. Okay, so we can see ticker symbols of each that we're looking at here. Uh, we can see the domicile is in Canada, simply just meaning that uh, it trades in Canadian. These funds trade in Canadian dollars. Uh, the funds originate in Canada. They are um, managed and operated in Canada. Okay, and then we have uh, distribution of credit quality and uh, bond characteristics. There really isn't much to say here. Um, if you disagree with that, then again, throw it in the comments below. Uh, but we got to keep ripping along here. So with market allocation, uh, Hamilton Enhanced U.S. Cover Call ETF, you would expect for HYLD that, um, yes, uh, the majority of its fund, you would maybe think that 100% of it should be in the United States, but we get a little bit of a sprinkle throughout all these other countries. Uh, we also have the Canadian equivalent of HYLD, HDIV, with, again, the bulk of of it originating in Canada with some of it, another uh, solid minority in the United States and a sprinkle throughout all these different countries. Now, the reason I think it's not say 100% in there is because perhaps uh, some of these companies, they trade on both the, the Canadian stock market and American stock market, uh, possibly, or there may be other factors that um, include that. And then with uh, HD, DIF and BMAX, we see that uh, we get another uh, weighting with HDIF, kind of similar to HYLD, and BMAX actually is more international focused. So that's why we see 55% United States, um, Canada gets 17, and then you know we get 6%, 3%, 4% amongst other international companies. Okay. Uh, next up, we have sector breakdown. Okay, so if you are a newer investor, you should be certainly be aware of the fact that uh, in the States and in Canada, uh, these are two markets that are not equal in the sense of where their weightings lie. So what I mean by that is if you look at the first, if you look at, say, um, with HYLD, we know that it is US centric. We see that it has a weighting of 29% towards technology. And this is what the States is known for, is for its technology. So on most American stock exchanges, their, their indexes, there is an overweighting towards technology and healthcare as well. Now in Canada, different. Um, we are not known for technology, so that's why you see a much lesser weighting in technology. But what we are more well known for is financial services and energy. And because of this, uh, typically can Canadian companies pay higher yields on average than American companies because these are much more established uh, entities like banks and insurance companies. Um, pipelines, energy producers like uh, um, Enbridge, Suncor, Amera, and the like. So that's it for sector breakdown. Then we get into the top 10 holdings. So 
Let's just chat about, actually, um, the top 10 holdings percentage of assets. You see 125%. Well, how can we be more than 100% in a given fund? Uh, there is a way in which this can be done. Again, for those who are newer, these all four of these funds use what is called leverage. They actually borrow money uh, to amplify the share price and to amplify um, the yield payout as well. The reason they do this is because the trade-off with cover calls is that instead of getting price appreciation in the fund, you are getting income. You are getting income per month. And the uh, that means it typically drags on the share price with that trade-off. You get, yes, you get money now, but you're going to sacrifice the growth in the long term of um, the fund being able to increase in share price. Borrowing money and the leverage typically will offset this and it will ideally what these fund managers want it to do is offset some of the drag with how cover calls react to um, that trade-off. Okay. Uh, we can see that also um, the Hamilton products, they invest in a bunch of different fund managers like JP Morgan, Horizons, and Global X. And uh, the Canadian version of HYLD, HDIV, we can see Horizon CI, while one Hamilton, well, two Hamilton products, Harvest uh, Bank of Montreal, and Harvest again. Okay, whereas the difference with Harvest and Brompton, they actually invest in their own funds. So uh, for HDIF, it invests in seven Harvest products. Okay, and BMAX invests in a bunch of Brompton products. Now, the reason for this is that it actually, um, in theory, it will um, decrease um, the management fees, and that is why they actually do it. Okay, next up we have equity characteristics. Um, effective date, I believe this is when this information was last updated. Uh, that's what that is supposed to mean. Average market cap, and so the underlying assets under management. It doesn't mean that these are not, this doesn't mean assets under management because uh, we're going to get to that um, as we scroll up, but it's just that the average market cap of the underlying assets that are held within the ETFs that these ETFs are holding. Okay, and then we get some of these other metrics, price to earnings ratio. Why is this almost 22 when this is like 12? Well, the reason for that is uh, because technology companies, the, the weighting towards technologies, technology usually have higher price to earning ratios. They're growing quickly, spending a lot more money, uh, whereas the more established companies um, are generating more cash flow than say uh, the quickly growing um, technology companies that are um, spending more to innovate and and to establish themselves. Okay, and then HDIV and um, BMAX are kind of just middle of the road. Uh, price to book sort of reflects this as well. Uh, return on equity and portfolio. To, portfolio turnover, you're going to see a much lower number with BMAX and Harvest as they're only holding their own products, whereas Hamilton is trying to change out theirs as to refine um, the underlying ETFs, mainly because uh, these are newer funds. They want to not necessarily be so rigid and stick to just the same ETFs. There might be others out there that offer better returns, maybe lower fees. And I know Hamilton is very much bent on trying to um, improve the quality of their cover call ETF funds. And then what else we got? Volatility measures, nothing uh, registers here for that. And then we have asset allocations. We can see here that HYLD, we got mostly 125% in stocks. And BMAX is the only one that actually invests in fixed income. By the way, these are four funds. All four of these funds I own to various weightings. HYLD is my biggest by far. 
Uh, second up is HDiv and then Brompton, or I should say BMAX and HDIF are roughly about the same, but much less. But I am working on uh, getting these two much closer to um, HDIV. Okay, so then we have annual average returns. We can see that HYLD uh, year to date is up 10%. Um, it, it's one year performance. Performance total return is about negative 4%, and since inception, it's down negative 8%. Whereas HDIV, year to date, 3%. Uh, one year performance is negative 4 Since inception, is 7%. Uh, HDIF, year to date, 2%. Um, one year, negative 8 And since inception, is negative 10. Now again, these are newer funds. You can see here that the inception date for HYLD is just, it's a year and a half old. HDIV is the senior on the block with, um, with almost turning two. Uh, and the rest of the, oh, well, BMAX being the newest at nine, nine months, I guess. Yes, we have product facts. Um, this information, I guess, was last updated on the 23rd. Uh, fun family and its name. We, we can see the names there. Morningstar category benchmarks. We have Soul Active, blah, blah, blah. Now, this, according to, uh, I would say, Hamilton and some of the stuff that I've watched, I believe that they're trying to track um, the benchmark that they're trying to track is actually a, a other ETFs. I believe for this one it's XIU and for this one it's VSP. Um, mainly because VSP is a Canadian hedged S&P 500 ETF. This is trying to track the S&P 500 and the closest other product out there is an S&P 500 ETF by um, uh, Vanguard. Uh, and uh, Hamilton trying to do the same with XIU with the, with the um, TSX, the Toronto Stock Exchange. And then we have the management fee, which is pretty standard. We see 0 0.75, 0 0.65. We have the management expense ratio. Now, why would these two be different? Well, the MER basically is all your um, management fee costs, which would include this management fee, uh, operation costs, trading costs, and interest payments on that leverage. Okay, then we have fund net assets or assets under management. Uh, HYLD in the last year and a half for a Canadian fund, this has actually been a, a really nice growing fund. Uh, same with HDIV and HDIF. And BMAX bringing up the rear with a commendable $45 million. Okay, uh, and then the 12 month, I guess I take it it's the 12 month trailing yield is 13. This is actually, I think, more closer to. I guess it would be 13%, but I know on a going forward basis, it's probably closer to the high 11% range. Okay, and that pretty much wraps up everything uh, with the side-by-side -side comparison. So uh, if you like what you saw, as always, I really do appreciate it. Uh, smash all the buttons of the like and subscribe variety. Tune, stick around to watch other um videos on this channel in regards to high yielding income funds uh, and how to generate 10% yields and whatnot. I will, with that being said, I will see you all in the next video.